This is quite a discovery. Fragments of a biblical scroll, along with other relics, have been found in desert caves in Israel. Dozens of pieces of parchment were written in Greek, uh, with just the name of God appearing in Hebrew. With more, here's David Campanale. The book of Zechariah has two figures, a priest and a king, who work together to bring about a new holy state. The Bible has to be the most mysterious book ever to exist. Even though it has been simplified for decades with clear interpretations from prophets, deacons, and other preachers, it still has many hidden secrets and scary tales man might never comprehend. One of the most frightening contents of this holy book is its 2,500-year-old lost chapter that has very terrifying knowledge that scares unbelievers worldwide, shockingly, including atheists. What is this mysterious book? And what does it contain that deeply disturbs these unbelievers? Join us as we uncover the truth behind this lost chapter and explore its hidden teachings. The parchment had been written in Greek, the language adopted after the conquest of Judea by Alexander the Great. The name of God, though, exclusively appears in Hebrew. The Book of Daniel is an ancient year-old book with a 2,500-year-old chapter that was banned and lost for many years but contains some of the scary facts and real-life stories in the whole Bible. One particular person's life story scares even atheists of what God can do to those who don't believe his might or fear him. This person was King Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar was a powerful king of old Babylon. He ruled for many years and had major successes, like capturing Jerusalem and sending the Jews away. He liked making grand projects like the Hanging Gardens and having a strong government, but he was too proud, and it caused his downfall. Keep watching to understand why. Everyone, old and young, men and women, even children, kneeled before Nebuchadnezzar when he was king. His power made him rule over an enormous empire that included Assyria and Egypt, but his pride and laziness were his biggest flaws. Soon enough, he got too caught up in his success and didn't reason anymore. This mighty king used his influence to trap Jerusalem, a very important place to the people of Judah. He had a servant named Jehoiakim who served him for three years before rebelling. Instead of destroying Jerusalem completely, Nebuchadnezzar chose to be smart about it. He didn't attack directly but controlled the Judean kings like puppets to keep his power over the city for a long time. This situation created a structure where people started to feel unhappy and disagreed with what was happening. But they were scared of Babylon's strong army, so they didn't do anything rash or upset Nebuchadnezzar. According to 2 Kings chapter 24, verses 1 to 17, Nebuchadnezzar intentionally made Zedekiah, a young man, the king of Judah, like a puppet. This was to keep Nebuchadnezzar's power intact and prevent any rebellions. 2 Chronicles chapter 36, verses 11 to 20, discusses Zedekiah's wrong actions. He didn't listen to Jeremiah and other messengers from God. Instead, he made fun of them and ignored their warnings. Zedekiah didn't follow God's commands, broke promises, and didn't stop people from worshiping idols in the temple, as mentioned in 2 Chronicles chapter 36, verses 12 to 14. Even though many false prophets said they would win, Jeremiah warned Zedekiah that there would be punishment for rebelling against Babylon. But Zedekiah didn't listen. He rebelled anyway, which led to Babylon attacking Jerusalem. The siege was so bad that it caused a famine, and eventually, Babylon won. Zedekiah was captured and killed. The Babylonians were really cruel. They even killed Zedekiah's sons in front of him, which was awful. They made sure Zedekiah would never see the light again. Then, they focused on destroying Solomon's temple, which was really special to the people. One day, in Nebuchadnezzar's 19th year as king, Nebuzaradan, a top officer, came and burned down the temple, the palace, and all the important buildings in the city. What happened next will shock you. The destruction of Jerusalem's walls left it unprotected. Before Nehemiah rebuilt it, Jerusalem had been a safe place for its people. But when the Babylonians attacked, they not only ruined the holy city, but also stole its valuable items. They took everything they could find, even the most minor, from God's temple and the king's palace. This included treasures from the magnificent temple built by Solomon, 
which was once a symbol of God's glory and the pride of the Israelites. The temple's destruction wasn't just about losing a building, it represented a broken promise and harmed the relationship between God and his people. According to Jeremiah chapter 52, verses 17 to 23, the Babylonians took bronze columns, a large bronze basin called the sea, and various other items used in the temple service. They even took small objects made of gold and silver. The columns were 27 feet tall, decorated with bronze borders and carvings, and topped with bronze capitals adorned with latticework and pomegranates. The second pillar had 96 pomegranates on its sides and 100 on its latticework, just like the first one. The rest of the people became enslaved in Babylon, and valuable items from the temple were taken too. This was the third and most terrible time they were captured, leaving Jerusalem destroyed and empty. After the temple fell and the Jews were sent away, their religion changed. They realized they could connect with God anywhere, not just in special places. Understanding that God was everywhere, even in Babylon, helped them keep their faith strong. God chose Nebuchadnezzar to punish the people of Judah because they stopped following him and started worshiping idols. Nebuchadnezzar made Jewish boys like Daniel learn and serve him. Maybe because of this, Nebuchadnezzar thought he deserved to be honored. So, he did something surprising. Shortly after conquering Jerusalem, Nebuchadnezzar commanded a giant golden statue of himself to be built in Babylon, towering 90 feet tall on the plain of Dura. The chest was made of silver to represent Persia after Nebuchadnezzar's reign. The skirt of bronze represented the Greek Empire. The legs were made of iron to represent the Roman Empire. The feet of the statue were made of iron and clay, meaning the predicted final days when God will take home the righteous. People believe Nebuchadnezzar was Nimrod's reincarnation, and his statue was a reincarnation of the Tower of Babel. Nebuchadnezzar gathered officials to dedicate it, commanding everyone to bow down and worship the statue when they heard the music or face being thrown into a fiery furnace. The ceremony began, and everyone followed the order except for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These three friends refused to bow down, going against the customs, which made certain Chaldean officials jealous and angry. They reported the Hebrews to Nebuchadnezzar, using their refusal to worship any god but their own as an excuse for revenge. When Nebuchadnezzar found out about their disobedience, he was infuriated. Daniel chapter 3 verses 13 to 14 recounts the raging edict of Nebuchadnezzar to have Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego brought before him. He asked them if they would refuse to worship his gods and the golden image he erected. The Jewish men, firm and undaunted, answered that they didn't need to defend themselves. They had faith that their God could deliver them from the fiery furnace. Even if he decided not to, they would not bow down to the king's gods or his statue. In a nutshell, they told him that rather than fear his furnace, they feared God, and even if they died, they would still serve the living God. Nebuchadnezzar got really angry and made the fire seven times hotter than usual. When Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown in, the men who threw them got burned up from the intense heat. But inside the furnace, Nebuchadnezzar saw something unique. He saw four men walking around, untouched by the fire, instead of just three. The fourth person looked like an angel showing God was with them. Nebuchadnezzar realized that the fourth person was the Son of God, meaning Jesus was with them in the furnace. Even though Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego might not have known it, the proof was clear. This showed how God can surprise even the most challenging people like Nebuchadnezzar. And despite Nebuchadnezzar's pride, he finally met someone way more powerful. We're not done yet. Daniel chapter 3 verses 26 and 27 tells us that when Nebuchadnezzar called them out of the furnace, they were totally fine. No hair on their heads was burned, their clothes weren't damaged, and they didn't even smell like smoke. Even though it seemed like they would die in the fire, they survived against all odds. The fire was supposed to hurt them, but their faith in the true God was stronger. This miracle showed their unwavering faith, trust in God's power, and dependence on His strength. For Nebuchadnezzar, and those who don't believe in God, 
It showed how powerful God is. This teaches us that God can rescue us from tough times or give us the strength to endure them. As Christians, we understand that while God can save us, He might also test us to strengthen our faith and character. Knowing that God is always with us, supporting us through everything, rescuing us, and ultimately saving us forever gives us hope even during hard times. This knowledge of eternal life with God brings comfort during life's challenges. In Daniel 3.28, 30, Nebuchadnezzar praised the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, recognizing their unwavering loyalty to him. He even made a law that anyone who spoke against their God would be punished by death. After that, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were blessed in Babylon. In the Old Testament, Jesus isn't directly talked about like in the New Testament, but he's still there in many ways. The important lesson is that everyone, including leaders, should accept that God is in charge. Even if they argue against it, God always wins. Choosing to follow God's rules makes you his friend. Proverbs 16, 2, 3 teaches us to trust God with our plans, even when things are tough. It's important to remember that God looks at our intentions, not just our actions. Even though Nebuchadnezzar saw God's incredible power, he didn't change his ways. So God had to intervene. It doesn't end there because King Nebuchadnezzar once had a really strange dream. What did King Nebuchadnezzar dream of? And why did it terrify him so much? In Daniel chapter 2, verse 1, around 604 BC, Nebuchadnezzar had a troubling dream, so he sought help from his wise men to interpret it. He threatened them with harsh punishment if they couldn't do it. Even though they were skilled in speaking to gods, they couldn't meet his demands. This made Nebuchadnezzar furious, and he ordered all the wise men to be killed, including Daniel and his friends. Daniel remained calm and asked for time to interpret the dream, hoping for guidance from God. Eventually, God revealed the dream to Daniel through a vision, and Daniel praised God for his wisdom and help. Daniel affirmed that God controls time, seasons, and rulers, and thanked him for giving him the answer to the king's problem. Daniel praised God for being powerful and mighty, showing that no one, not even a king like Nebuchadnezzar, is greater than him. In Daniel chapter 2 verses 24 to 30, Daniel asked Arach, who was ordered to kill the wise men, if he could interpret the dream before the king executed. Arach brought Daniel straight to Nebuchadnezzar, calling him a man who could explain the dream. Nebuchadnezzar wondered if Daniel could tell him not only the dream, but also its meaning. Daniel replied that human wisdom couldn't do it, but there's a God in heaven who reveals secrets. He then explained the dream, showing the king's worries about the future, especially the end times. That's not all. In Daniel chapter 2 verses 31 to 35, Daniel talked about a statue made of different stuff. Gold, silver, bronze, iron, and a mix of iron and clay. A stone, not made by humans, smashed and broke the statue's feet. Then, the stone turned into a huge mountain covering the world. In Daniel chapter 2, verses 36 to 45, Daniel explained the dream to Nebuchadnezzar. The different parts of the statue stood for various kingdoms. Nebuchadnezzar was the gold head, followed by less valuable kingdoms, Medo-Persia, Greece under Alexander the Great, and finally, Rome. The feet and toes, made of iron mixed with clay, meant a divided kingdom with strengths and weaknesses. Eventually, God's kingdom will last forever, more potent than any earthly kingdom. With this, it's clear that God is in control of history. He knew what would happen to the different kingdoms, and his eternal kingdom would eventually win. Daniel confirmed that the dream was true, and that God showed Nebuchadnezzar what would happen. Each medal in the dream represented the nature of its empire. Babylon was gold, symbolizing absolute monarchy. Persia was silver, showing a monarchy with solid nobility. Greece was brass, representing a government of educated people, and Rome was iron, symbolizing a military democracy. This part tells us how long each empire lasted. Babylon lasted 66 years, Medo-Persia 208 years, Greece 185 years, and Rome more than 500 years. Even though Daniel interpreted the dream as a warning, Nebuchadnezzar didn't change his behavior. His pride was too strong, and he didn't humble himself before God. And that led to what finally made him learn his lesson. 
What was Nebuchadnezzar's last lesson? Nebuchadnezzar's wife felt very homesick, but he didn't know why. Feeling like his usual self and wanting to cheer up his wife, he built the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, a famous wonder, and a zoo just for her entertainment. One day, he stood on his palace roof, admiring all he had accomplished, boasting he had built great Babylon with his power and glory. But that night, he had a troubling dream. Wanting an explanation, Nebuchadnezzar called for his wise men, including Daniel, also known as Belteshazzar at the time. Nebuchadnezzar was undoubtedly in for a big shock. You see, the dream was about a huge tree that everyone could see but no one could touch. An angel was ordered to chop down the tree, leaving just the stump covered with iron and bronze and make the ruler act like a wild animal seven times. The wise men couldn't explain the dream, showing they lacked bravery, not wisdom. Then Daniel, known for his connection with God, arrived. The delay before seeking Daniel shows how people often turn to God only after trying everything else. Nebuchadnezzar was impressed by God's past actions but wasn't entirely changed. The dream's meaning showed Nebuchadnezzar's embarrassing downfall because of his pride. The tree representing his rule seemed impressive, but its destruction and transformation into an animal-like state meant he would fall from power. This punishment was to humble Nebuchadnezzar and show that God, the highest, rules over earthly kingdoms, honoring the humble. Daniel explained that the massive tree was Nebuchadnezzar, showing his wide-reaching power. The angelic messenger decreed that the tree would be cut down, leaving only a stump with iron and bronze, indicating the king's impending ruin. It didn't end there. Daniel also explained that this was God's command to make Nebuchadnezzar understand that heaven rules over the earthly kingdom. The seven years were meant to show that God is in control. Despite the divine punishment, there was hope because the dream also suggested that Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom would be restored when he recognized God's sovereignty. Daniel talked about love and truth, similar to how the prophet Nathan corrected King David. Prophets often used trees to symbolize great men and rulers in their speeches. When Daniel explained Nebuchadnezzar's dream, he predicted that the king would face a humiliating experience. He would be driven away, eat grass, and be soaked with dew for seven years. This was God's way of showing Nebuchadnezzar that heaven is in charge. Despite this warning, Nebuchadnezzar didn't humble himself so that he couldn't avoid his embarrassing fate. Daniel advised him to stop sinning and start doing what was right, but Nebuchadnezzar didn't listen, unlike the people of Nineveh, who repented when Jonah preached to them. I guess that wasn't his final lesson, so he was in for some more warning from God. A year later, Nebuchadnezzar looked at Babylon and marveled at its greatness. Then, a voice from heaven announced that his kingdom would be taken away and he would go mad living like an animal. Nebuchadnezzar had a year to change his ways, but he forgot about the dream. Unfortunately for him, God remembered. Recent archaeological findings show that Nebuchadnezzar played a major role in building Babylon, which goes against what people used to think. Inscriptions on the bricks talk about his achievements in making Babylon better. Nebuchadnezzar's story teaches us to listen to warnings from God and humbly change our ways. Eventually, his dream came true, and what happened next is so sad. King Nebuchadnezzar ran mad. Some people doubt if Nebuchadnezzar really went insane, but between 582 BC and 575 BC, there are no records of him doing any official work, which is strange because leaders usually brag about their accomplishments. Maybe Nebuchadnezzar could have humbled himself, but he didn't, so he faced even more humiliation. After the set time, Nebuchadnezzar looked up to the sky, and suddenly, he became sane again. Nebuchadnezzar praised and thanked the most powerful God, knowing that God's rule lasts forever. He realized how small people are compared to God's greatness and praised God for having power over everything, both in heaven and on earth. Nebuchadnezzar improved and returned to ruling his kingdom, which became even more impressive. His change showed how amazing God is. Impressive, right? Nebuchadnezzar understood that God is true, faithful, and just, and he can humble those who are proud. The king learned this truth about himself after realizing the truth about God. This important change teaches us to think clearly and worship sincerely. Some people see Babylon as a symbol of the world's system. 
Nebuchadnezzar's downfall represents how nations are judged, and his restoration shows the kingdom of God. God's discipline worked because Nebuchadnezzar changed for the better when he returned to his palace. He credited God for his success and chose to honor God instead of himself. Nebuchadnezzar learned to be humble and avoid pride. It's a good thing his story had a happy ending. Do you think the book of Daniel should not have been banned and lost in the first place? What do you think about Nebuchadnezzar's story? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. If you enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to hit the like button, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel.